This video is sponsored by Ewin Racing. Ewin Racing is a premium chair maker. Oh boy, premium to the extreme. Like, look at this. Watch this. Watch this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Seriously, seriously, E-Win Racing, everyone. Check out their chairs. They're awesome. They're comfortable. You can get 20% off with code Nintendo Prime down in the description. I don't know what's going on at Nintendo, but they can't seem to stay out of the negative headlines out there. As much praise as Nintendo deserves for certain aspects of their company, some of their games are utterly amazing. I think the Nintendo Switch itself is a pretty great product, has some flaws, but in general, it was the correct product during the right time and place in history. Clearly, with the sales of the system, most uh, consumers seem to agree, despite, you know, you have, you have your critics that come out of the woodwork and they can feel how they want to feel. But for Nintendo, it was obviously a massive success, just like the Wii was, just like the DS, even the Nintendo Entertainment System back in the day, and so many others, the Game Boy, that have done extremely well in this industry for Nintendo. So... They deserve some praise for that stuff. Apparently, the partner with Universal seems to be going pretty well, right? We have the Mario movie coming out that people seem to be mostly enjoying all the previews for that. And yeah, the Nintendo theme parks, the Nintendo World at Universal Park seems to be well received as well. So there are some things Nintendo does that are uh, perceived well. I mean, even Nintendo fixing Joy-Con drift, I know there's a whole lot of debate about them admitting the Joy-Con drift, not admitting, they're fixing Joy-Cons outside of warranty that are having drift problems, at least here in the United States. So that, I mean, there, there are some things there. There's some okay things. But for every thing we could say positive about Nintendo, there's always the opposite. Uh, how they treat ROM sites, you know, I understand when the ROM sites are making more profit, but ROM sites in general, uh, how they go, went after Steam uh, for having images of their games, uh, it was a little strange because they were talking about profile pictures, like using Nintendo characters in profile pictures on Steam. Nintendo went after that not too long ago. That was really strange. Uh, Nintendo has shut down a number of fan games where other companies let fan games go. Nintendo is well within their legal right to shut down those fan games. And in some cases, it might make sense, like when they shut down um, a Metroid 2 remake, well, Nintendo already had their own in the works. So something like that makes sense. But there's other things they've shut down along the way that didn't make sense. So, look, Nintendo does some really strange things things uh, that other companies just don't participate in. I remember as a content creator, for years we couldn't even use gameplay clips or trailers in our videos, or Nintendo would copyright claim and copyright strike your video because Nintendo just didn't want you using their content. And then they released a whitelist you could use if you joined their partner program, which involved Nintendo taking some of your revenue, and then you couldn't even use, like, gameplay clips from the most popular, like Smash Bros. You couldn't even use gameplay clips from their most popular games. So it was really really weird how Nintendo has handled some of this stuff over the years very out of touch I think is the way to put it and it kind of feels like they're back in that out of touchness again lately they obviously shut down Smash World Tour I'm not going to get into all the details about that there's actually been a hell of a lot more information that's come out about the Smash World Tour situation since my uh, video I made on it and frankly I'm extremely out of depth on it, but it sounds like Nintendo is mostly at fault for the shutdown of Smash World Tour. Yeah, Panda and their CEO or former CEO deserve some, some heat, but in general, Nintendo uh, is not uh, you know infallible here. They, they definitely seem to be primarily at fault uh, for Smash World Tour getting shut down. Maybe not the championships this year. I don't know. Nintendo's refuting that they ever said that. I, look, there's too much information out there on it, right? I'm... I'm on the outside looking in at all of this. I don't pay attention to the Smash Bros. community, so... But that is the thing Nintendo injected themselves into. Beyond that, Nintendo today, or really not today, but last week, uh, did another thing that just doesn't really make sense for a number of reasons. And they went after Did You Know Gaming. And they copyright striked a video that we covered. In fact, we covered extensively. We, we released details about that video uh, before the video came out, because I was in contact with the people making the video. I saw all the documents, okay, before the public did. I had access to all of their research 
before the public did, before that video came out, just because a lot of the people that work on Zelda content at Did You Know Gaming have a deep level of respect for the work I used to do as a Zelda theorist and in promoting Did You Know Gaming's Zelda content back in the day at my former employer at Zelda Informer. So there's a mutual respect there, so I get access to things sometimes, and it was really cool. This video was about Heroes of Hyrule, a Zelda game pitched to Nintendo from Retro Studios back in 2004 that never really was in development in the first place. They just had a, a very detailed document with all the pitches and all the story ideas and everything, and uh, all that came from former Retro Studios employees and everything, and Nintendo decided to copyright strike that video down and has not released it as of today and did you know gaming can post videos again it's a it, it prevents you from posting content for about a week uh obviously if they get more copyright strikes then their channels in further trouble the third strike their channel no longer exists so this is a big deal and nintendo is not rescinding the strike and that that sucks but what sucks more is that this was the second video they had done on zelda games pitched to nintendo from retro studios and the other video was never shut down that other video is still live right now. Nintendo didn't do anything about it. And that video contained documents of Retro Studio game pitches to Nintendo that were in active development and had playable demos. So that video had even more information, had even more stuff going on, and Nintendo didn't bother to touch that video. Instead, they specifically targeted Heroes of Hyrule, which was a Final Fantasy tactic style Zelda game that never actually existed. Very strange, right? I I, I don't understand why this is the one they went after. They let the other one go. All the people that talk about Yura Zelda and beta stuff, they let go. They've let go almost all coverage of things that never happened but were talked about behind the scenes with Zelda go over the years. I've been covering Zelda for decades at this point, and Nintendo has only ever really shut down Zelda fan games. They've let go of people talking about things that never happened but were once an idea. I have talked myself about many, many canceled Zelda games over the years and have never once had Nintendo give a shit. And here's Did You Know Gaming, by the way, several weeks, months after this video goes up, getting hit by Nintendo's lawyers. I don't understand it, I don't get it, but here is the post they put up on Twitter about this. Um, it says, Nintendo has removed our Heroes of Hyrule video from YouTube. This was a journalistic video documenting a game that Retro Studios pitched to Nintendo nearly 20 years ago. This is an attempt by a large corporation to silence whatever journalism they don't like and slap in the face for video game history preservation. We're exploring all available options to restore the video. The video is not restored yet. Um, this is just, it's baffling to me that Nintendo did this again and did this in this way about this video, about this specific thing, when they've let so much of the... It's one thing if they were consistently shutting down all conversations about pitched and canceled Zelda games, right? It's one thing if they were shutting all of that down, but they're not. They're not. There's no consistency in how they're applying the supposed rule they have internally that you cannot discuss things that don't actually exist because... Heroes of Hyrule doesn't actually exist. It was just a document put together by employees that no longer even work at Retro Studios and pitched as a concept to Nintendo that Nintendo shut down. It was never even a game. It wasn't playable. It wasn't a tangible thing. It was just an idea. And Nintendo's copyright striking over it. Look, for all of the love I can give Nintendo, I am not somebody to just sit back and defense force bad actions. Because frankly, when I have enough information and have enough experience to know that this is just fundamentally absolutely 100% wrong, and when it comes to covering Zelda game stuff, I definitely feel like I have a, a, little, a little bit of experience. I can tell you right now, this is just wrong. This is just wrong. I don't know if Did You Know Gaming has the legal means, the funding, the backing to be able to even fight this sort of strike because it's probably going to be something that Nintendo would take to court. I just don't see them letting this strike go. It was manually applied by Nintendo of America. So, I, man, I... Well, what I don't understand about Nintendo 
and not just as a content creator, but just as a fan, is nothing about this video made Nintendo look bad. Nobody saw this pitch for a game and got angry at Nintendo for not approving it. That's not really what happened, right? It was just one of those one-off, really interesting ideas that was pitched to Nintendo. They didn't think it really fit with the series, and then that was really the end of that. Like, they're really... It's not that big of a deal. No one's really upset at Nintendo for shutting it down. Some people would have liked to see what this could have became. Maybe it could have became an original IP, but that's just not what happened at Retro Studios. Obviously, they went on and ended up making Metro Prime and stuff like that. So there's all these thoughts that Retro Studios could have made a Zelda game all these years. They had several Zelda game pitches. For some reason, this is the one that's getting shut down. I, are they making it? Are they making a Final Fantasy Tactics Zelda game that we're not aware of for mobile devices or something? I uh, I don't know, guys. Nintendo really frustrates me at times. As much as they make me smile with their games, and Tears of the Kingdom is probably going to be, I don't know, one of my favorite games ever, based off Breath of the Wild anyways, I still don't fathom the way Nintendo operates in certain given situations, and this is one of them. Um... Why Nintendo does this, why their legal team does this, other companies always let this stuff go. Other companies even work directly with Digino Gaming. Uh, they've had people like from Valve come on and do interviews with them on games like Portal and stuff. So other companies view value Digino Gaming because Digino Gaming is sort of a gaming historian channel at this point. They provide gaming history videos, right? It started out as some interesting, cool facts they would drop, you know, in a meme style many, many years ago. And then once they hit the YouTube scene, they started actually focusing on creating historically accurate video game content to preserve information about the past. In this case, preserving information about heroes of Hyrule. And the funny thing is, they didn't go and strike all the other channels that covered Did You Know Gaming's video that also showed the documents, including us. So, Mm. I'm sorry for Digino you know Gaming. I know I don't get along with everyone at Digino you know Gaming. I think uh, Liam Robertson has me blocked on Twitter or something like that because of, of a spat we had like a couple of years ago on Twitter uh, over something I, I admittedly should have just let go. But I don't know. Him and I are both stubborn. So, but I do get along with several other people at Digino you know Gaming, and I feel for them. I think this is bullshit, and unfortunately, I don't think Nintendo's backing down. Anyways, guys, you guys let me know what you think about this whole situation down in the comments below. Is Nintendo in the wrong? Is Digino Gaming in the wrong? Obviously, I gave all of my thoughts. You know where I stand. Uh, but where do you stand? Let me know down below. I am Nathaniel Rubblejance from Nintendo Prime. And you know what? I'll catch you in the next video.